Can't, I'm going to mess this up like a billion times. Hello and welcome to another video in the RTM tutorial series. In this tutorial, we will look into file management with RTM. There are hierarchy of the data, just like how there is hierarchy of variables in Java or Python. Um, higher level data will be able to access lower level data, but lower level data cannot access higher level data. And the highest level file in Artium is the project group. When Artium is running, there must be a single project group open. Um, there cannot be two, it must be one, and that sort of like represents what is presented on your screen. So you can see already we have project group 1.dsnwrk. This is the file that we want to save. So let's go ahead and save this file. I just right clicked. Save this file into um, this folder called demo. Let's call it demo as well. Now I went ahead and created project and schematic file inside the project. Um, because I'm fairly certain you know how to do that at this point. But in rare cases you might want to make a custom footprint and symbol. Um, you can, of course, create a library inside here by going to schematic library. However, the better way is by creating an integrating integrated library um, that is under new libraries and integrate library. You can see that this is at the same level as project folder, meaning that every file inside this project will be accessible to other same level projects. But if you were to put um, these schematic library files inside a single project, say inside this demo project, and you have another project that you want to use the same file, um, that different project won't be able to access the file in the other project because it's in different hierarchy. So I went ahead and created this nice box inside the schematic library and went ahead and saved them as well. Um, once you save everything in order to use this um, symbol in your schematic for instance, you want to right click on the integrate library and then compile it first. Always save and then compile whenever you make change or add something. That is only for the integrate library. Once you've done that, you can go to components and click the drop down menu <clears throat> and select the integrate library. And you see my component here. I can right click and place the component. And ta da! There is my nice square. So that is all great, but before we move on to the part two, I just wanted to show you how these files actually look like in File Explorer. So let's go ahead and explore. As you can see, everything is in the documents slash to demo. That's where I've been saving everything. And you can see the demo.dsn.wrk. This would be the Artium project group. This would be the file that you would double click in order to load the screen as it is right now when you go to a different file and when you do that you must make sure you have everything else as well so for instance this library package and schematic um, symbol now we are going to move on to the part two of it which is sharing files among peers one of the way to share files with peers is using a online platform such as github or google drive firestream and the other way to share file with others is, of course, sharing the file that you saw in the folder directly. However, we don't recommend you do that. Instead, we recommend to use a project packager. Since GitHub or Google Drive Firestream might be a new concept to some, I will show you how to set them up. But if you already know how either of them works, then you can go ahead and skip to the timestamp show in the top right corner. And when it comes to using GitHub, um, I recommend using GitHub Desktop application that you can download from GitHub website. 
it is functionally basically the same thing as the terminal kit but it's got very nice GUI so I will pull my github GUI like that and the first thing that you want to do um, once you have the GitLab hub you want to load the github repository you can create new or you can um, download the one on, that is already created um, either way let's go ahead and add let's clone git repository let's go ahead and select um, the demo and the location where we want to download this will be called well that folder is already existing so let's call it demo1 Once we are done with that, um, you can see the screen. Um, click the Show in the Explorer, and well, there are some files. Every file that you add or change or delete from this directory <coughs> will be shown in this list as a changes that was made, and you can. Um, commit and upload it to the github or if you have issues you can go to history to see what have changed but with our team that is a little more difficult but let's go ahead and then edit this readme file hello nice to meet you well that's a typo so let's go ahead and change to two now we should be able to see the change in the changes t to two all right, I think that's a good change. I'm going to go ahead and write the summary. You must put the summary. That's the only requirement that you need to satisfy to commit. So fixed typo. Commit to main. Now, once you have committed to the main, you have to push it to the origin. Um, you can do that by pressing this button. And it's going to sync. Um, now your file is officially on the main github repository i recommend clicking this fetch origin button a couple of times whenever you can really because um if your peers have made change it doesn't show up or update your local directory automatically so before you start working it's always best to get the latest files so that there's no confusion Let's move on to the Google Drive Firestream. Google Drive Firestream is lesser known, but in my opinion, one of the best um, ways to share files with peers. So all of you as a UMass student will have Google Drive Enterprise account and Google Drive Enterprise account will have option to create a shared drive. The best thing about shared drive is that you can use Google Drive Firestream to get it recognized as Google uh, local drive on your system. So this fa so this page from Google, it, I got to it by looking up installing Google Drive Firestream, and this would was the first thing that came up. Um, you can click this link to download Google Drive Firestream and download for Windows or Mac if you have Mac. Um, you do have to remember that you must be logged in with school account, um, that is uh, Google Drive Enterprise account, not a personal account, because Google will actively try to hide this menu from you if you're a personal user. Once you have that downloaded, it should be straightforward. Um, install, um, and everything will be more or less ready. At the end, this is what it will look like. You will have a Google Drive Firestream drive as um, if this was a, another physical drive in the system. And all your shared drives are going to be in the shared drives folder. So academic um, shared drive is, for instance, is a shared drive, not a shared folder. Um, so in here, I've already created a folder called demo and actually up updated um, these files in, in here as well. Um, now if we 
change the name of this file for instance say to um hello or if you change the content um this will be uploaded to the google drive instantly it will be synced um so whenever your peers change the data it will be updated locally um and that leads to my second point where if you have multiple people editing at the same time you might run into an issue where you might be working on older version of the file and trying to upload newer version that is in your local file while other peer might have uploaded already a new file then there's a conflict um, just be careful that could happen um, if you're using github there will be a little check mark that appears right next to here. I'll show you that in a moment. Yeah, so this this would be um, my example. Um, you see there are check marks that you have not seen before. Um, these check marks mean that it's not modified yet. Um, so they are in sync with GitHub files. Um, these check marks will only appear if you open a file in GitHub directory. Um, so yeah, just be careful, we've had issues like that and lose some work. So let's move on to the project packager. Um, project packager is a way to conveniently zip all the project files that you're working on. So in order to package the project, we can click, right click on one of the project and select project packager. A new window will pop up. Um, you can package just the focus project, in this case, is which is a demo project. But if you do that, you will only be seeing this files. So um, I like usually package entire project group, which will include every file. Let's go ahead and save this to the same directory in the two demo. Um, the managed projects are something that we don't have to worry too much about at UMass. Um, when you have larger scale in a company, corp uh, in a corporate environment, um, they can have a local server where they sync all the important files such as um, project um, library project. It's a thing that we don't use, so you can either check it or uncheck it. Um, it is better um, practice to leave it checked because wherever it goes, um, you don't want it to be connected to the server. Um, the directories in the zip file, you always want to keep it in relative path to common parent directory, because if you select relative path to file drive, um, if you were to say move it from C drive to D drive, it might not work. The generic files are PDF and Gerber files. Generally, you will be able to generate them again was because you already have schematic and PCB but if you want to include them you can um, it will make the file larger you can add history files and EDIF files um, if you want to preserve that as well um, but let's for now let's just go ahead and move on we'll save all the files that's good and it is done done packaging and we can click finish and go to our directory where under to demo, demo project, we can find our demo project zip file. And you can just drop it off to uh, somebody else's USB, for instance. That be it for today, um, for sharing files and managing files in Artium. Um, I hope this was helpful and good luck in your STP project. I just said project twice because STP, the P stands for project, so this would be STP project project. No, what? Uh, yeah, never mind.